In this breakdown, I want to go over my initial first impression of the Meta 2 packaging, installation, setup and tutorials. Today I'll be setting it up on a Windows 10 high-spec computer. The packaging had a nice aesthetic to it, it also looked very safe for overseas travel. It comes with a bunch of international plugs, a spare attachable headrest and a nice stand as well. For the setup, to make everything easier, just install the drivers from metavision.com slash get started. It's on the front page under download installer. So setup was pretty straightforward after installing. The only thing that I found frustrating was the screen displays. The meta was automatically being picked up as a second monitor, but the display seemed to be orientated the wrong way. To fix this issue, I had to open up the Meta Display Manager app and change the settings to Direct Mode. In terms of comfort, the Meta isn't the most comfortable headset in comparison to other VR and AR headsets. It feels unbalanced, awkwardly placed and heavy at first. You do kind of get used to it, however. It also gives very distinctive red lines on your forehead afterwards, much more noticeable than other headsets we've seen due to the weight of it. When we tried out the tutorial, the extended field of view was very noticeable. We're used to the Microsoft HoloLens field of view, so this was an impressive setup. The field of view doesn't cover the entire glass like it may seem, but it's about the size of the average size smartphone if you were to sit it on the front of the glass. Even though restricted, it still felt like it was full field of view. As a mainly VR company, we're pretty used to our headsets being tethered, and if it gives better performance, then we don't mind. The Meta has a cord that runs to a HDMI, USB 3.0, and a power cord, so pretty standard. We played the tutorial and the demo they had provided. In comparison to the HoloLens, we could see hits and misses. So here are the hits. The field of view was much better as stated previously. You felt a better sense of agency in the depth. You felt as if you could reach out and touch these objects displayed a lot better than in the HoloLens. The objects and interactables looked amazing, it had an incredible wow factor. And here are the misses. The tracking wasn't great. To put it bluntly, this is what we were the most disappointed about. It usually took quite a few times to grab or select anything, and when pulling objects around, they did tend to lag every time. The calibration was off very frequently. We did about five calibrations with two different people and couldn't quite get it right. If you closed one eye, it was generally perfect, but the screens overlapped most of the time. Overall, I think it's a pretty standard AI headset. I personally think that since it's tethered, the tracking and interaction should be a lot smoother. However, I can't really fault it on anything else. There will be a few cases where this could be the perfect headset, so bearing that in mind, give it a try. It does look incredible and will definitely impress.